I'm going to ask you for your answers in a minute. It's not a quiz. This won't be on the exam. Everybody got it? Everybody ready? OK, so I'd like, like to ask you, by a simple raising of your hand, I want you to raise your hand if you said yes to these things. So we're going to go through them one at a time. So the first one was about running red lights. Raise your hand if you said yes. Oh, everybody. OK, that's good. OK, how about uh, this one about uh, tailgating? Raise your hand if you said yes. Oh, everybody. How about that? How about this one about uh, people talking on a cell phone? Most people, OK. Throwing litter out of a car or anywhere. Most people, interesting, very good. How about parking illegally? Lots of hands, very nice. Last one's about merging late at the very last minute so you can get a good spot up the front. Very nice. OK, so for most of these, almost all of you raised your hands, or the majority of you raised your hand. But what you don't know so far is that if you look at the bottom of that questionnaire, there is either a capital A or a capital B. So there are two different versions of this. And the difference is in the very top of the sheet, because some people if you had A, it said, have you ever, even once? And if it was B, it says, does it annoy you when you see other people? <laughs> and so if everybody raised their hands to these things, what are we saying? I think what we're saying is, we do things that we find annoying when other people do them. <laughs> right? That's what that means. So we see people do things, and we think that's really annoying. But yet we do the same exact things. And I think this is an example of where empathy, which is a the subject of my talk, is really not working well. Because if we were truly empathic, when we saw someone run through a red light, or we saw someone uh, cut in front of us in traffic, or throw litter out of their car, when we get mad at those people, what we should be doing is thinking, well, I do that. Let's see now. Do I want people to get mad at me when I do those things? <laughs> Not really. But yet we get mad at those people. So this is one example of where empathy seems to be breaking down and not working too well. So there are other examples of this. Um, one of my predecessors in this Chautauqua lecture series, John Bose, um, uh, EKU professor gave a very interesting talk about Native Americans. Um, he talked a lot about how Native Americans have been treated in the United States. Um, not very well, I'm afraid. Uh, but he talked about um, a, a bunch of interesting people, and one of the people he talked about was this guy named Richard Pratt, Captain Richard Pratt. Captain Pratt uh, was very concerned about Native Americans. Of course, he called them the Indians. And actually, he really wanted to help the Indians as much as possible. He was really a, a true person who wanted to help these people. And so he created this school for Indians, a famous school. And this school, the goal of the school really was to bring these Native Americans, these Indians, into the school and remake them in really his own image, in the image of Western people white people. Because he thought that the way they were, their own culture were, was not uh, advanced. It was uncivilized. They were sort of barbarians. And so one of his philosophies was really, kill the Indian, save the man. And again, what he meant by that was to kill all the Indian culture, to get rid of their language, to get rid of their religious beliefs, to get rid of their dress, to get rid of their relationships, and make them into people that looked like him, Western people, white people. Now today, we would look back at that and think that it wasn't very, that was a, a, a misguided policy. 
Uh, we are kind of culturally sensitive now. We know that that was probably a bad idea. and It was harmful to those people. But in his mind, this was really a helpful thing because they couldn't read. They didn't have property. They didn't have land. And so we thought he was helping these people out by bringing them into his civilization. But again, I think this was a failure of empathy. I think if, if the Indians had said to Captain Pratt, we would like you to get rid of your culture to become part of our culture, he would have said, that's crazy. He's not going to do that. But that's what he's asking them to do. So he couldn't really see the world from, his, uh, from their eyes. He could only see it from his own, even though he wanted to help them so much. So this is another failure of empathy, I think. This is one of the consequences of not having empathy. Oh, I need to change one more chord here because this next thing has some sound. Okay, so that was in uh, Chico in California at a uh, university. And these were um, sort of Occupy Wall Street protesters who were protesting at the university, sitting across that sidewalk. And this was the university's response. These were uh, campus security people that came. And um, they did something that looks it's sort of hard to watch, right? They were pe spraying them with pepper spray, very intense pepper spray from close range right in their faces. And uh, it was very painful for those people. And it's, it's tempting for us to look at that and think, how could, this per how could this man do that? How could he spray these people who are just sitting there very passively trying to have a protest? How could he spray them like that and really live with himself? But I think if, we, if that's our conclusion, if that's our reaction, it's, it's understandable. But I think it's also a failure of empathy. Imagine it from his, his point of view. He's a campus security person. His job is to maintain order and security on the campus. He was probably given some orders by his superiors to clear the path, get rid of these protesters. These protesters were resisting. As you can see, there are a lot of people around him chanting, yelling. It's a very tense environment. And when authority is challenged in that way, Sometimes they respond in a dramatic fashion. I'm not trying to excuse what they did, but I'm just saying we should try to understand what he was thinking, what they were thinking while they were doing it. And maybe that can help us understand how this thing could happen, how this seemingly strange thing could happen. So those are just some examples of where I think empathy breaks down, and there's a failure of empathy. And so what I want to do tonight is really talk about what empathy is, um, what it does for us, why should we care about it, what the barriers are to feeling empathic, and then maybe how we can help people be, become more empathic, how we can help ourselves.